Hello hackers! Welcome to yet another video in the Exploitation Scenarios module. We're going to talk about JIT spraying um, at a high level. Of course, you will have to JIT spray in this module, which will be super exciting. Um, uh, this is mostly a review of a concept that we touched on when we talked about um, data execution prevention. But let's, let's um, recall security mitigations. In the shell code module, we talked about data execution prevention, which prevents the execution of injected shell code by making, for example, the stack not executable. Um, in the memory corruption and the memory errors module, we talked about stack canaries, which protect against stack buffer overflow exploitation, and address space layout randomization, which makes control flow hijacking unreliable. Right? So modern exploitation is hard because of all of this stuff. Um, but let's look at a way that we can bypass data execution prevention when just-in-time compilation is in play. All right, um, what is just-in-time compilation? Well, just-in-time compilation is a very clever technique that allows the interpreted languages that we rely on every day to be fast. Specifically, uh, the biggest, biggest benefactor of this is JavaScript. Um, modern higher level languages in general though, including Java, Lua, Python, if you use the PyPy Python runtime, um, utilize just-in-time compilation. You write the code in the language of choice, JavaScript, Java, etc. At runtime, if code is deemed to be performance critical, instead of being interpreted, it will be compiled to binary code. And that binary code will then be extremely fast when it executes, of course, right? So um, in your experience thus far in the reversing module, you saw YAN85. YAN85 is an interpreted um, virtual machine. Here you'll see it as a just-in-time compiler and you will have to exploit it that way. Um, now, of course, the um, code that the, the binary code that's generated is related to the higher level um, uh, language code that that the attacker writes so, uh, or, or the user writes or a web page um, provides. A web page provides some JavaScript. That JavaScript gets compiled into native code and then runs on the machine of um, the victim. If the website is malicious, um, bad things can happen specifically an attack called JIT spraying um, utilizes uh, this interesting property of um, just-in-time compilation that gives an attacker control of values in executable um, um, areas of memory. So consider the following JavaScript, let's say. You have var ASDF equals, and then a big complex, crazy number. You can also imagine the same thing, um, a, the yan 85 statement of im, or instruction of im, that assigns an immediate to a register, could also have a crazy argument um, if yan 85 had more bits to play with. Um, this might jit to the following native code, move rbx the number. Right, which assembles, of course, to some encoding of that instruction. Here is that number verbatim in Little Endian. And here is that 48, um, that's the H the, that, that says, hey, this is a 64-bit instruction. BA means move an immediate into RDX. Single uh, byte um, opcode, and then here's the operand. All right, but what if there was another vulnerability that messed with the instruction pointer? Uh, with how it was calculated to jump in. And then, of course, this other vulnerability might be a memory corruption overflowing one byte of the instruction pointer. Uh, a lot of potential different uh, ways that can happen. But what if we jump not to the beginning of the instruction, but we jump two bytes in? If we jump two bytes in, we start executing right here, as if this was the beginning of the instruction. If we disassemble this code, it was carefully crafted to disassemble to an exit system call. Right? But of course, it could be any other system call. So by 
carefully creating constants in our higher level language, in our emulate, uh, interpreted language, or just-in-time compiled language, rather, we can um, cause um, uh, system calls to be, or we can execute controlled native code. So that's cool, but what about ASLR? Data execution prevention is only one of the kind of trifecta of um, mitigation that we've talked about so far. Um, we've seen ways to bypass stack canary situational ways or leak them out in um, the memory corruption module. But what about address space layout randomization? Um, well, this example just has one variable right here. What if you did something like this? It's hard to see now I realize, but these, this is hundreds and hundreds of declarations of the same variable. And this is a, kind of a lazy way of doing it. There are more intelligent ways. You could dynamically generate this code, especially in JavaScript, um, higher level languages like this. And then that code would be just in time compiled into pages upon pages upon pages upon pages that contain the constants that you need. And then you jump and hope you get lucky. You've experienced brute forcing memory ad offsets already in the previous module, um, the more code that you can jump to, the easier that gets. It's not a full solution to ASLR, but it um, helps in, uh, improve success um, significantly. In also in the context of other randomness from other sources other than ASLR. Um, so that is JIT spraying. It's a, a powerful technique um, and remains. Uh, a usable attack vector in a lot of situations to this day, um, especially as JITs proliferate. There are just-in-time compilers, like I said, for JavaScript, Java, Python, Lua, and they're all different. They're all based on different code bases, of course, with a lot of the same bugs. Um, in this module, like I hinted, you will see a just-in-time compiler for YAN85. Good luck.